Hi, this is uh, Rob Mukai from uh, Coco Te Eco Inn in Ixcalac, Mexico. Um, doing another fly tying video. Boy, I'm on a roll here. I guess this whole social distancing thing is uh, giving me some time to play around a little bit. Um, but uh, this is a fly that uh, I've uh, designed. It's basically, I don't know how many people have ever wandered on a, a turtle grass flat, you know, in the Caribbean here and had a little white. Um, they're isopods. They look like potato bugs. Stick to your leg. Um, and if you actually leave them on there, they'll actually bite and they'll start sucking your blood. They're kind of nasty little things. But they're only, you know, they're just uh, potato bugs, basically. Um, in any event, um, I figured, you know what, gosh, those uh, bonefish in particular got to eat those things. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, given a chance, permit will too. So I started playing around with it. I've got had a few designs. Um, and I kind of have fallen to a particular design that's really quick and easy to tie and um, has been very effective. I've caught numerous bones and I've hooked one permit on it, but uh, I was using a very small hook and it came undone. So um, what I've done is I've actually moved up to a size six uh, Gamakatsu SL45 hook, which is a bonefish hook, which is a lot bigger than you need, but um, for bonefish, and I guess it's, you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, in, uh, tricks in trout fly tying, you know, which tie a, a small midge onto a bigger hook. Uh, it's kind of what, what I'm uh, playing around with here. So here's what the f actual finished fly looks like. I think this is on a size eight. Um, but, you know, basically if you've tied trout flies, it's a sow bug. <laughs> so <laughs> if you've done that, it should be a fairly uh, recognizable thing for you, but um, anyway, here we go. This will take this is a fairly quick tie. So, um, I use a tan thread, this is a 140 denier, um, and just kind of cover the hook shank as far as you want. I mean, I think this one will go down to about there, but um, and then this is one where you can take the attach your weight to the very front. I'm using a bead chain here and this is the quick technique uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Greg Brannon, taught me. It was a commercial tire but like just go you know eight times one direction, go eight times the other direction and then it pretty much uh, figure eight it and then go under And then go to the back. And as usual, I like a little bit of super glue just to hold everything together. And we are using a half inch. I've only got a little bit, but I only need a little bit. Um, woolly critter. Um, from uh, Puglisi, this stuff makes life a lot easier. Um, just tie that in at the back. And then the other thing I like to do here is, I mean, this is just tinsel. Um, I just use, I don't know, take a couple of inches off. And I just double it. Just fold it over your thread and then tie it in right at the back on the top. And then advance your thread to the front. Half hitch, get your bobbin away, and then start polymering again. You really want to just get the legs out of the way. Make sure nothing's binding down.
don't have quite enough here, but like you could figure eight it over the eyes if you like. It's not critical. Then pull everything back and then you just need to cut this off. Grab your uh, tubbing brush and just kind of make sure everything's free, nothing's trapped in there. Brush it up. And here you want to kind of split stuff down the middle, so just take your bodkin and run it down the middle and split the hairs down the middle. And I want to even out the legs too. I don't want to have like a hundred legs on one side and no legs on the other. Okay. Now you can take your tinsel and then just wrap it in. Kind of try and keep it centered. I like to wrap it underneath it a couple of times just to lock it in place. And then you can trim it. Now you can whip finish. So pull all the legs out of the way and then just do a two three turn whip finish. And trim it off. Now, to finish this bad boy off, what I do is first off, pull all the, the, the legs to the sides and then away. So, like, pull them down. Now, this is going to be way too big, so we're going to have to trim this bad boy back. This is where these uh, curved scissors come in handy. I actually like to cut them back. Now, this what you're, you're going for here is a pill bug shape, so make sure you... Pill bug, potato bug, I guess it depends on where you are in the country, but... So kind of like a shape of a tic-tac. Actually size of a tic-tac too, so. All right, I'll call this good. Now you take your legs and you stretch them out on both sides. Now again, these things, if you just leave them on here like this, they'll stream back and they'll f form a tail, and that's kind of not what we're looking for. We want them to be legs that kind of jiggle. So we're just going to cut them back to a little less than a quarter inch, I guess. And there you go. Let's see, I guess we can put it back in the vise. That'll help you see it a little bit. So that's kind of the shape you want. This might be a little overweight, but we could probably trim it back a little bit, but uh, and then that's the top. And this works really well um, with the bonefish and with permit. Uh, and I'm guessing you could probably catch all kinds of jacks and snappers with it as well, but uh, 
this has uh, been pretty successful and it's really great in like super skinny water. All right, well, that's the sea louse. Um, give it a try, uh, tie up a few of these. They work great on the flats. You'll catch, you know, bones, permit, um, and pretty much anything else that's on the flats as well with this bad boy. All right, till next time, see ya.